yeah, I don't really like to tell people that I've met or people that I'm meeting that have cancer. So, because usually when I tell someone they have can- I have cancer, they're like, oh my God, are you okay? Like, uh, and they act like way different around me. Like, I don't like that. So I just never tell them. I'm Jose, Uh, I'm 16, going into 11th grade, and I like listening to music, spending time outside, and I want to be a chef, have my own cafe. The food I'm going to make, probably like Hispanic dishes that they taught me, and then maybe some fusion recipes too. Well, I remember going to a different doctor, and they were pretty skeptical about what was wrong with me. So they told me that we should go to CHKD, see if they can figure it out. Then we went into an office, had my brain scanned and everything. And Dr. Telestro, Telestro, uh, yeah, he told us that I had cancer. How old were you? I was seven. I just remember going to a room, then they put a needle in my arm and told me you're gonna be doing this a lot, so pre- prepare yourself. I didn't know what that meant at the time. Then they just took me in for an MRI again, and then I woke up and that was my first surgery. I remember meeting a bunch of different kids. I remember having to go to different hospital rooms and everything, then having to do all of these other surgeries and stuff like that. My life didn't really change after I was diagnosed, besides realizing that my arm is pretty much not gonna be good and stuff. I didn't really care about the tumor in my head because I was a kid at the time and I just didn't think it was much. I still had school, but my teachers, they sent the work home for us instead of me going in while I'm still going through treatment and recovering. Yeah, I don't really like to tell people that I've met or people that I'm meeting that have cancer, so. Because usually when I tell someone they have, I have cancer, they're like, oh my God, are you okay? Like, uh, and they act like way different around me. Like, I don't like that. So I just never tell them. I'm Jose. I'm Jose's dad. I'm Sigmarie, I'm his mom. We started noticing a few changes um, in February, January, February of 2015. Um, He started having a lot of episodes of getting very sick, uh, just randomly vomiting, um, being unable to sleep. I had called his pediatrician already. She was just weirded out by the whole entire situation. She's like, he's showing signs of Parkinson's, but he's too young to be diagnosed with that. So um, she got us in right away to the neuro at CHKD. And they take him into the, off, into the room right away. And they're in there for about an hour and a half to two hours. And then he comes out and he's like, I'm going to need you guys to go straight to the main, main hospital. Um, I already called. They're going to be waiting. They're going to do a CAT scan. I remember going in. They come out, like, not even, what, 15 minutes later. They come get us. Dr. Delastro takes us into a little private corner. And the one thing I can say is everything was just static sounds. I just heard... Sorry. <laughs> I just heard inoperable brain tumor. Wah, wah, wah. And he's like, what do you mean inoperable? He's asking questions and I'm just like, I know exactly what he's talking about. <laughs> I, I literally like, this was my greatest fear. After his biopsy and um, after they put in his shunt and drained tried to drain the tumor. Um, He couldn't walk. He couldn't do a lot of things. So he was in the PICU for four weeks. 
We met Mr. Brian there. He was the child life specialist. <laughs> he came with Dr. Lowe into the room and he told us Jose was diagnosed with, with a paleomorphic xanthrocytoma and it's inoperable. There's not much they can do. Um, usually his tumor is either in the front or the back, can be dissected, removed, and off we go. Unfortunately, my beautiful child had to be unique <laughs> and have it adhered to his thalamus, which is very dangerous. He'll, he'll never be in remission, so he was off treatment for about a year and a half. We, we were excited. We thought everything was going well, and then one day we're at Ocean Breeze, I take him to the restroom and all of a sudden I just see like his face droop. Right away I called the emergency line and they told us to go in. Um, and that's where, that's where they told us again, he'll need to start treatment, a whole different medication, a whole um, different, it, it targets something different and it was for exactly 55 weeks. Unfortunately, he was leaving, he was deploying not even two weeks later. So that entire treatment, I did it by myself. Thankfully, his mom and his sister helped. My parents came in whenever they could. I got back just in time for the last couple of rounds. We were able to celebrate his last okay. chemo. And then we started noticing more symptoms. Um, we went to get a few Second opinion, second and third opinions, but unfortunately no one gave us anything, anything that would be logical to do. So they suggested, well, let's see a radiation specialist and let's see if that's even an option. It was an option. Um, we did it. It was the proton in Hampton. Uh, we caught COVID in between all of that. <laughs> That's another thing. It was during COVID. Uh, but he did his 33 sessions. We, we had high hopes, unfortunately. No positive outcomes. So right now we're in the, let's see and hope. It wasn't easy. Uh, and each time we had hope, but mm -hmm. unfortunately, uh, Nothing's worked so far, so now, like she said, hope and see. So when we got our bag, uh, Mr. Bryan came up to us. We were just, we were new to the whole oncology uh, department, and uh, Mr. Bryan comes up with the big duffel bag. He's like, rolling it down the hallway. Oh, yeah. like, this is for you, and we're like, what's this? What is this? There's a tablet inside, there's cards, there's a... He got right away, he opened it right away. The... Yeah. He's like, oh, there's a Kindle. Toiletries, trees, everything, everything we needed in case of emergency. And uh, yeah, we'll never forget that day. We still have the bag to this day. We still use it. The OG, yeah. it's the OG. It's been on vacations with us. Toiletries trees were always something that we always forgot. We get a toothbrush or if dad decided to stay while I was there staying also, like he wouldn't have a toothbrush, but we didn't have to worry about that because we just kept everything in the ready bag and replenish it once it finished. There was even hair ties, a hairbrush for me. Yeah. <laughs> he actually got in the day before the playset was to be installed. It was like, it was just kind of daunting to me that people would actually be that kind. I, you guys were the first charity, like the first organization that ever helped us, so. It showed us that people actually care. Mm -hmm. People coming together to help us out. It was a beautiful thing. It was a beautiful moment. Yeah. One thing that people may not understand while fighting pediatric cancer, uh, like I mentioned earlier, some people have that misconception that it's just one chemotherapy and it's always the same result. The child will lose all his hair, pale skin. You know, the typical thing you may see on TV. It's not always the case. Uh, each child reacts differently because you know there's so many different medications out there so um, I always tell people maybe educate yourself a little bit mm -hmm. or ask the question and be very cautious of the words you use um, we were approached a few times and said oh he doesn't look like a cancer child 
That is the most heartbreaking comment to ever make to a parent who is already struggling. So is there anything that you can think of um, that you would want to say to a family who is like stepping into a cancer diagnosis? Like what would you want to say to them? I would say put the pride to the side mm -hmm. and ask for help when you need it. Mm -hmm. Because there are people, there's great people out there like Rock Solid that will help you. Um, and try to stay positive. I know it's hard, uh, but you have to stay positive. Take every day like it's the last day. You enjoy every single day to the fullest. 